Now you need to locate center O. And how you locate center O is that this is the most superior this is the most superior plane and you can see that this plane intersects and now this becomes the most superior plane and now this becomes the most superior plane. Inferior plane, the mandibular plane is the most inferior plane but right at this point this becomes the most inferior plane and that is the cranial plane. Look at these three planes as a beam of light which converges right around this point right here. And what you need to find is the most superior plane to the inferior plane and the shortest distance. Is it, is it this point right here? Or is it this point right here? You can clearly see that this is the shortest vertical line. Much shorter than this right here. So center O is the midpoint of that vertical line. Let me repeat that center O is the shortest distance from the most superior plane to the most inferior plane. The shortest distance. And this is the midpoint right here and that's considered center O. To find anterior arc you need to get a compass and I recommend that you don't get a cheap one. Get one that's a professional grade. This is the metal point. This is the pencil point. Put the metal point on center O. Put the pencil point on nasion. Nasion is right here. The pencil point is right there on nasion. And then draw, strike an arc going through nasion all the way down past the chin point. Now to get the vertical age 4 arc, put the metal point on A and S and pencil point on SOR. Do not put it on nasion as some doctors mistakenly have done in the past. Put it on SOR right there. Swing down to the chin area and strike a short horizontal arc. That is the age 4 vertical arc. Now get a ruler with a millimeter measurement and strike an arc 10 millimeters inferior to the first arc. Right now, the difference between the Jefferson analysis and the Sassuni Archeo analysis and Dr. Bysol's simplified Sassuni Plus is that this is the key element of the Jefferson analysis. Uh, Sassuni and Dr. Bysol have maybe about 75% more other uh, arcs and things that you need to uh, assess. My key uh, thing is that this is the most important information that you will need. But I do not want you to feel that this is the only analysis to use. I mean, whatever analysis that you're using now and you're comfortable, use it. But use this as a backup. Also, uh, once you learn how to use my analysis, it will simplify uh, the analysis so that you can understand, truly understand Dr. Sassuni's analysis as well as Dr. Beisel's. But this is the key element of the Jefferson analysis.
the anterior arc and the H4 vertical arc and H18 vertical arc. As you can see, I used the uh, black magic marker to do the tracing, but for the arcs, I like to use a red magic marker. And just go over the line that I just made. That's the anterior arc. This is the age 4 vertical arc. This is the age 18 vertical arc. So let me just label that. Anterior arc. Age 4, age 18. Ideally, anterior nasal spine should be within 2 millimeters of the anterior arc. Ideally, pagonion should be within 2 millimeters of the anterior arc. At age 4, menton should be right at this level, age Four, vertical arc. At age 18 and older, menton should be right at the age 18 vertical arc. Note, let me emphasize that at age 18, the vertical montan does not go beyond the age 18. It stops right here. So at age 56, the vertical arc sh uh, shows age 18. It should be right at this level. A lot of uh, older patients tend to be shorter than that. That's because they either lose their posterior teeth or their weight, they wear down those posterior teeth. And where they might have been down here, they would end up being over here. Sometimes they become more retrognathic. And that creates a lot of not only aesthetic problems, but a lot of physiologic problems. This patient, in looking at her x-rays, you can see that her molars are just starting to form. So she's not quite 18 yet. I don't exactly know how old she is, but let's assume that she's uh, uh, 13 years old. At age 12, the vertical should be right about here, halfway between age 4 and 18. And how do you assess that? Uh, at 13, there's a difference of 9 years. And menton grows 0.75 millimeters per year. So at age 12, it's 8 years, you multiply 8 by 0.75 and you get 6 millimeters and you, you, you should be right about here. Looking at this analysis, she's just a tad retrognathic. It should be out here. We, she can stand to bring the uh, ANS forward a little bit couple of millimeters and you can see that her upper lip is a little bit flat I, I like to see a little more little more uh, fullness there vertically and I don't know how old she is right now but she's pretty close to where she should be Pagonion is slightly ahead I rather see Pagonion slightly ahead than being uh, behind the red uh, anterior arc. A lot of times when a patient is retrognathic or the vertical is short, you can almost bet that they might have a TMJ problem. It's a malposition of the mandible where the mandible is retrognathic 
and vertically short and there's tends to be uh, many times a compressed joint and I can usually use the Jefferson analysis to screen for uh, TMJ problems and uh, sleep apnea. A lot of patients with retrognathic mandible where the where pagonion is significantly behind this anterior arc I will always ask the patient when I see them the next time do you have TMJ problems do you do you get headaches and nine times out of ten they, they would tell, tell me yes this anterior arc if if uh, you treat the patient to the anterior arc and to their ideal vertical this is where you get what I consider the most beautiful profile that you can deliver to your patient. I would also say that that is close to being divine proportion. I will also tell you that if you treat to, to, these, to the anterior arc and the vertical arc and you treat them uh, according to where they should be, you will also tend to alleviate a lot of medical problems like TMJs, migraines, uh, sleep apnea, uh, upper airway problems, things like that. Why? Because a lot of patients have a retrognathic mandible. If it's retrognathic and or deep, they tend to have TMJ problem. You bring them down to where they should be, uh, according to the anterior arc and the vertical arc, and you relieve the joint compression. If you uh, see a lot of patients with the retrognathic mandible or deep bite, they tend to close the uh, airway, uh, the pharynx. And if you bring them to where, according to the uh, Jefferson analysis, you will relieve that airway and uh, they tend to be able to breathe better uh, through their throat. So this is not just an analysis for facial aesthetics, it's also for physiologic harmony and uh, uh, total health and wellness. Uh, th this concludes my tr uh, cephalometric uh, demonstration. Uh, if anybody has any questions or would like to contact me, you can contact me at my email address. It's uh, facialbalance at AOL.com. I thank you for listening to my uh, video demonstration and I also thank you for your interest.